Ready? Yeah. On order, four covers, table ten. Four oyster soup, main course, four turkey, yes? Wait. One no breadcrumbs. Watch that table, yes? Russell and Miller are the two commies in the kitchen this evening. By the end of tonight, one is going to win a job in one of my restaurants, and the other one's going home. Yeah, sorry, Gordon. Fuck, you're nearly going home. Watch the tickets, please, Russell. I'm trying to run a fucking hot plate here, and you're knocking them all over the place. Yeah, come on. Yeah, you're like a baby fucking rhinoceros. Come on. Russell, move your ass. Table six, yes? Four oyster soup, yeah? Yes, chef. Try and serve it before fucking midnight. Now, tonight's starter is oysters in champagne with a cucumber pappardelle. Don't turn your nose up at oysters. They are delicious and a real gourmet treat. If you don't like raw oysters, try cooking them because they taste amazing and can be enjoyed by the most squeamish guests. Now, first of all, got to open the oysters. Don't be scared of doing this because it's actually quite straightforward. All you have to do is get the knife and pierce inside the muscle. Not at the side, not at the end, because that's where the shell's really brittle. And just push down on top of the oyster until you get through, and then just twist, and the shell just pops off. Open up. Just cut through the muscle. And out into the bowl. These are rock oysters, and they're from Devon. And they're one of the tastiest you can get this time of year. Right, cucumber, not too much cucumber, yes? All we do is get the peeler, place the cucumber down, and peel these really nice strips of cucumber. And they not only look fantastic, but it means they actually sort of look identical to Papadelli pasta, and they take seconds to cook. Bring to the boil a couple of ladles of vegetable stock. Add the cucumber, oyster juice, and the cream. Bring back to the boil and add your oysters. You've really got to move your ass because the oysters overcook within seconds, so you've really got to be quick and 30 seconds off the heat. Next, add a pinch of salt and a sprinkling of fresh chives. And then we're going to finish the soup with champagne. The only thing that's missing now, the touch of lettuce. And that literally goes in seconds before you serve it. Take your cucumber. And that is a fantastically light, tasty, sumptuous, beautiful soup that's been finished with champagne and lettuce. Service, please. please. Table seven, uh, Jean-Baptiste. Ali, yes. go. Use a ladle, please. We're going to be here all night, Sir Russell. I said a ladle. I can't keep on telling you again, yes? There's no lettuce in there. Oh, come on. Excuse me. Give me the soup back from the table. Gordon is very happy with soup. Sorry? Hurry up, John. Yeah, apparently not. Please. Yeah, come in. Why do you find it's funny? You're laughing away. No, no, no. I want the fucking <laughs> soup back. Just get the fucking bowl from the table. Let's go. Two more pans. Wait. What happened there, Miller? Half the table had lettuce, the other table didn't. Get a pan, please. Back up to the boil. Yes. Quickly. And if the oysters are overcooked, Miller, start again. Hurry up. Hello, Hello, ladies. Hello. No, you've got the best table in the house. Three oh. ladies all to yourself. I'm a lucky man. Huh? <laughs> Do you enjoy your oysters? It was very good. First time as well. Oh, really? Anything yeah. happening downstairs? Not quite yet. I'll Not leave quite yet. Just <laughs> almighty. Should have happened half an hour ago. I hate any help, Dan. Huh? Dear, oh, dear. <laughs> How are you, darling? Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas welcome, to welcome, you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, Christmas. Yes. In the Osborne household. Yes. Uh, must be mad, no? It's really... You know, hustle, bustle, hectic, dogs, kids, yeah. the whole lot. And I can imagine Ozzy biting the head off a turkey before it goes in the oven, no? He ends up cooking it. I, he does. He ends up cooking because I can't. I can't believe that he does the fucking cooking in your house. <laughs> What's he like? <laughs> I mean, what kind of things does he cook? Good old English thick chips he Seriously. does, and they're brilliant. Really? Do you get excited about going out to dinner? With good food, I do. Mm. I really... I, you know, there's such a difference between good food and mm -hmm. food. Yeah. Now, it's been well documented, your relationship with food. Bulimia, for instance. It's I mean... a thing of when well, we all need to eat, and I would need to eat, but I would hate the fact that I needed to eat, so I'd right. want to get rid of it. Yeah. And then I, I just wouldn't feel clean. I had yeah. to just get it out of my body, because it was crap that I was eating. I mean, that's all under control now. That's been... Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Extraordinary. The fact that you look amazing, how do you keep it up? And what was the last thing you had done? Oh, Make... cosmetic? Yes. My boobs. Your boobs? Yeah, but... I don't like them now, they're too big, so I'm going to have them changed. Does Ozzy think they're too big? 
No, he likes them. But they're amazing. You don't need to change them, he Sharon. Them. No, they're too big. They weigh a lot. Honestly, Seriously. they do. They weigh a lot. Seriously. And it's like, nah. Really? Yeah. Have you ever had oysters before? I haven't, because I think they look like bogeys. Big but, bogeys. Um, Jean-Baptiste, the play. Oh, did you hear that? That accent? No. I, I don't think you're going to chew. Sharon being Sharon, you're going to swallow. <laughs> Ready, babe? <laughs> Just have a little smell. Smells like an old fanny. This is a high quality oyster. You're going to absolutely <laughs> love it. I can't believe you just said that about my oyster. Here you go. I'll take this big one. Ready? So, up, go on, go on. tilt down, finger. Go on. Mm. All right, let's smell your breath now. <laughs> and okay, the low fat on. as well. <laughs> this one, that's a little bit smaller, this one. You're okay. Maybe oyster. turn around the other way because that, oh, that, see, that's okay. it's like a, a pearl. That there's to sort of fit onto your mouth. Okay. Can't wait. It feels like a one, testicle. Two. Oh! All right. Go on, babe, straight down. Well done. <laughs> and swallow. <laughs> no, no. What was that like? It's Such like being in bleeding Brighton and taking a mouthful of seawater. Damn, you didn't like that, no? That's supposed to be an aphrodisiac. He's Aussie in for a good night. Not with this breath, he's not. <laughs> It'll murder him. Next on the menu, the kids get to eat Anthony. And if things go wrong, I'll be stuck with a family of vegetarians. Bye, Bye Anthony. Bye, watch out. Go. I'm off to Harrogate in North Yorkshire to get a vicar's wife back in the kitchen. The freezer is central to my cooking. Give us this day our daily bread. And I leave the commies in charge of the kitchen, so it could be me that ends up stuffed. Is it fuck warm? No, no. No, so do you want to serve that? No, chef. No, get the sprouts off and get them in the fucking pan. Let's go. Yeah. Russell, you're sending table 16. 16. Millie, you're sending table 3. Table 3. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, next up, the main course. Homegrown roasted turkey. Turkey. The one-hit wonder. Um, absolutely amazing bird. Stuff. Onion. Orange. Garlic. Thyme and bay leaf. Season. Truffle butter. This little beauty helps to take the turkey to a different division. These cost 50 quid for that size. Yes, it's expensive, but boy, is it worth it. Don't chop the truffle too small, because we want to taste and identify the truffle. Parsley. Tarragon. Salt, touch of pepper. Tablespoon of olive oil, and that stops the butter from burning. Take your piping bag and fill it. Separate skin from meat. Pipe bag in. Pipe butter. Massage. Salt. Pepper. Olive oil. Roast. Citrus breadcrumbs. Pancetta. Onion. Thyme. You don't need to try a good old chef's trick and pull down and just peel it off his lovely flowers. Pine nuts. Butter. Bread. Orange. Lemon. And as it starts browning, sprinkle your orange and lemon breadcrumbs. Lemon juice. There we go. Beautiful. Rest. Tin foil keeps it nice and warm and it cools down slowly, so the breast become really nice and moist. Calm. What you can smell, of course, is that amazing truffle. Absolutely beautiful. Turkey with truffle butter and citrus breadcrumbs, done. Now, let me show you something quick. Come here. Anthony, Nigella and Dina are all in the oven. Have a quick look. Don't touch. There you go. That's Anthony in there. For the past three months, my kids Megan, Holly, Jack and Matilda have been rearing their own turkeys for Christmas. Tonight, they'll finally get to eat them. Wave goodbye, Anthony. Quick, you're in Hi, there. You're... 
Bye, Bye Anthony. Anthony. Bye. Right, watch out. Yeah. Go. Right. At the table. Up. At the table. Oh, Scar, I want to see it. He's gone. He's going in the oven. Come on, at the oh, table. Man. Matilda, hop. Dear, oh, dear. Oh. Okay, now. Now, four minutes on the hot plate, yes? So uh, move your ass, yeah? A little bit of energy, yes? Yeah. In fact, lots of energy, yes? And yes, it is a race, Miller. Let's go down. Now, with the turkey, we're serving roast potatoes, carrots, and Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts always get a hard time, and we only get to eat them once a year. However, do not put a cross at the bottom like my mum does. When you crisscross the bottom of that, you end up with a soggy, overcooked sprout. Leave them whole. Into the boiling water, and cook for three and a half to four minutes. Then take them out and dump them straight in ice water so it stops them from overcooking. Then we're going to soak them very, very quickly with some almonds. So the sprouts just start to colour and the almonds just start going that really nice nut brown flavour. Now, the roast potatoes that are going with the turkey are charlottes. They're small, rich and very waxy, so you don't need to part ball them before you roast them. And this way, the flavour is extraordinary. Into the pan, season and colour on the stove in goose or duck fat. And if you give the potatoes colour before they go in the oven, you get this really nice, crispy flavour around the outside. Come on, come on, come on. Really important. Now the fingers are moving fast, yes? Come here, you. Don't serve it. Are you happy with that? Yeah, reasonable. You are, yes? Yeah. Haven't even tested it to see if it's warm. Yeah. It's still warm because this bit's warm as well, Chef. Yeah. Touch that there. Come on, Russell. Yeah, that's not quite warm. Is it fuck warm? No, no it's not. No, so do you want to serve that? No, Chef. No, get the sprouts off and get them in the fucking pan. Let's go. Yep. So delicious turkey, nice hot potatoes, yeah, roasted carrots and fucking stone cold Brussels sprouts. Come on. Right, Russell, come here. Miller, come here. That wasn't good enough. No, chef. A little bit all over the shop, you know that. You, stone cold vegetables, your turkey, carving, is shocking. How can you call that carved? It's like you've been in there with a fucking shovel. If I had to make the decision on those last two tables there, Russell, you'd be going home. Pull it back. Yes, chef. One table of five each. Let's go again. How about getting the turkey sliced on the tray this time? Yeah. Getting your vegetables piping hot. Yeah. And plating your turkey and your veg at the same time. Yes, chef. Yes? Here we go. Make it count. Move your ass, yes? <laughs> Clean your fucking plates, come on. Nice portions, piping hot veg. Let's go. Good. Well done, big boy, yes? Okay. You saved your skin there, big boy. Go, table 12. Nice. Go, please. Come on, Miller. Yes, go. Twelve, please. Go. <laughs> right, I'm going to nip in there. How was Nigella? Breast moist? I have to say, you, you've pulled off the hardest thing in turkey cooking. Really? Which is moist breast. <laughs> With, I'm a turkey sceptic. I know you are. You're a plucking, fucking finicky turkey grower. Uh, yes, and, I, and I'm fussy about turkey. Yes. And very, very rarely is it cooked properly. Yes. And that's really hard to pull off. So, Coming from you, Hugh, I'm honoured. Thank you. No, it was really, really good. How do you feel about Nigella being a man? Uh, uh, confused. <laughs> Nigella, a man cared for by Jack, age five. I mean, as a provenance, I mean, I like menus where they talk about the provenance of the yes. meat, you know. Traceability. Yeah, traceability. <laughs> now, I'll see you later for dessert, yes? I'll see you for the pudding challenge. Yes. How are you feeling about that? I'm slightly nervous. <laughs> huh? Good to see you. The turkey is lovely and moist. There's a lot of lemon in it. Sometimes I'm not sure about lemon, you know, so much lemon, but I did enjoy it, and I thought that the actual texture of the meat is lovely. And the sprouts are just the kind of El Dente that I struggle to get. She said, you're a little dog, hey. Good to see you. Oh, what have you noticed different about your sprouts and my sprouts? Actually, yeah. Uh, not cooked no, excuse me. Excuse me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Steady. Don't you start ganging up on me. 
There was no crisscrosses on my sprouts. No, there wasn't. No, that's why they weren't cooked. So they weren't soggy, Mum. Yeah, we no, served them whole for once. No. They were hard. They were you don't remember every time Mum served Brussels sprouts? She yeah. served them by the leaves. <laughs> See you shortly, yes? <laughs> Given it's Christmas, I thought I'd get a vicar's wife back in the kitchen. And believe me, she needed a miracle. Christmas, f for a vicarage family, I would say it's wall-to-wall -wall church. Mark does all the cooking except at Christmas when it does fall to me. I don't think I've ever really learnt to cook. Give us this day our daily bread. The freezer is central to my cooking. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. An alternative Christmas lunch would be, would be interesting. Amen. The ideal Christmas meal for me would be something that could be prepared in advance, that was easily cooked and served, but that also was exciting and that I had done for myself, and I would really love to see the family's face when I put that down. Hello, Ruth. Hi, Gordon. How are you? All right, how are you? I feel like Santa Claus. Great. Very now, glad to see you. Um, Christmas. Yeah. What's the problem? On Christmas morning, I'm up really early trying to um, prepare vegetables or whatever can be done in advance, mm -hmm. which is when I get really stressed. My solution to this, of course, it would be something simple and uh, something like a salmon on crude. Right. You can get prepped, yes. go off yeah. to church, mm -hmm. return, cook in the oven. Yeah. Whilst that's cooking in the oven, then you get the vegetables on. That will be done oh, within the time of the salmon being cooked. Fantastic. First and foremost important, get the salmon done. So it's just going to be um, layers of salmon yeah. sandwiched together. Yeah. Between the fillets, there'll be some butter, sultana, some ginger, right. some lemon and thyme. And the nice thing about this particular dish is quite, uh, yeah, it's quite festive. Mm. There's the salmon. It's been skinned, pin bone. Get the butter. Paste this all over the salmon. We get the head and the tail. Yeah. Opposite one another. Right. So we lift up the salmon. Place that on there. Any particular reason for that? Or? It's just so it cooks evenly. This is short crust, yeah? Roll the pastry out. Get the salmon onto the pastry. We're going to use an egg wash to stick this together. I want you to brush around the whole rim. Nice. And lift over. On your tray. That goes in the fridge. Excellent. Imagine it's Christmas morning. Right. Salmon's done. Yeah. Big weight off your shoulders. You're back from the church. What's next? Check the oven temperature. Yep. Whack it up. And then get the salmon. Yeah, straight in. And we're going to do like a cream league. Ooh, look Looks fantastic at the table. Yeah. Tastes amazing. And we're going to season with a little bit of curry powder. Right. Don't worry, a little bit of wash on there, please. <laughs> we don't want any dirty leaks on Christmas Day, do we? <laughs> no, that'll spread like wildfire around here, yes? <laughs> the vicar's wife's got dirty leaks. <laughs> so leaks into the pan. Nice. And lightly seasoned with curry powder. Yeah? yeah? Delicious. Cream in the leeks. Right. Job done. Take it out. Beautiful. Nice. Slowly. It feels really meaty. That slice is beautiful. I want you to put the potatoes on. Right. Main ingredient on the left-hand side of the plate. Look at that. Cream leeks. There we go. Right. Now, my dear vicar's wife. Yes? You're a star. Ha you're the star. <laughs> Happy Christmas. Wow! Wow! <laughs> mm. Wow! <Where> are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Can we have this? <laughs> Massive improvement. That is superb. Now, how was that? Really good. It's very nice. Yes? Yeah. And Ruth, not too stressed out? Very chilled. Fantastic. I've never said this to the vicar before, but get out of the kitchen, yes? And stay in the church <laughs> where you belong. <laughs> uh, New Year's resolution? Get back in the kitchen. Absolutely. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, Ruth. Hi, how are you? Yeah, right. how are you? Nice to see you. Mark, how are you? Hi, good. You well? Yeah, fine, thank you. Are you feeling less scared now about cooking? Are you... I've done a bit. You've done a bit? I've done a bit. Fantastic. I yes. tried the pastry again and it didn't stick to the pin. Oh, really? Plenty of flour. That's great news. Fantastic. Well done. Nice to see you. Take it off. Mm, Merry Bye. Christmas. Bye. Good to see you. Thank you. How's the turkey? It's really nice. Yes? It's very nice. Um, as you know, it's been my objective to get women back in the kitchen and it's gone very well. Thousands of requests, not just from desperate housewives, but some from men as well. And one that really sort of, I suppose, touched my heart was this man. Sharon happens to be, in my opinion, the worst cook on the face of the earth. She couldn't even make a piece of toast without burning it. 
Gordon, would you do me a big favour? I'm fed up of having takeaway food delivered to my house. Teach you to cook, um, what would I really like? Lamb chops and mint sauce. He <laughs> likes lamb chops. Thank you very much. Teacher, please, please, I'm starving. How? You, when did you well, do that, that? that? It was his plea. It was his message to me to get... How cute is he? Listen, that's one man I definitely don't want to upset. Come on, Mrs Osborne. Good to have you I in the mean, kitchen. I can do this. Right. I know I can. Now, these are very simple lamb chops. Pan onto the stove. This olive oil. Touch of olive oil. That's right. If I started off with butter, it'll burn too quickly, so it goes black. So, a little bit in. Nice hot pan. Rumours has it, OK, that you didn't even realise, A, how to work the oven, and B, what it was in your kitchen for. Is that true? You weren't that bad. No, my oven has always had the instructions how to work it still inside, taped to the side of the oven, because I never turn it on. No, it was my husband's hiding place for his booze, because he knew I'd never open it. Unbelievable. That's and where he's he used weed. to have his everything, and, everything And his rosemary. Oh, Special yes. rosemary, Moroccan black. Yes. Right, I want you to turn them now. They're ready for turning. Just one thing on there like that and turn it over. Now, be careful you don't... Don't, don't, don't smash yourself. Now, my kids are constantly banging on about me, even at the age of seven, six and five, that I'm embarrassing every time I go out. Do your kids ever get embarrassed about some of the things that you say and do? Please. My kids have been so... I mean, come on, look at their mum. I know, I know, I know. Come on. Can you imagine the old man and me turning up at parents' night at school? I would I love... I mean, my kids went through hell and back with us. I mean, their dad turning up in black velvet and all his jewellery for school meetings. Oh, and sports parents, day. And yeah. sports day. Yeah, he used to fall asleep at parents' meetings. He'd Serious. be there snoring, yeah, Serious. honestly. But no matter what, this is the yeah. one thing, no matter what you look like, what you do, every kid is still embarrassed. Really? So you might as well be something yeah. to be embarrassed about. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make a little doggy bag now and take these back. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is keep them wrapped in the tin foil. OK, put a little yeah. knob of butter in there. Yes. And into the oven. Present. And what would be best to serve with that? With that, you know what? A nice mashed potato. You know how to make a mashed potato? Yeah, you get powder and you pour boiling water in it. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to come round Christmas Day, you know that. Uh, I'll have some help. So oh, I'll see you in a minute, yes? Next on the menu is dessert time. Hugh Furley Whittingstall takes me on with his chocolate chestnut truffle cake. Suddenly, all your confidence is just sapping away. <laughs> And Sharon Osborne is doing the judging. One of them I really love, and the other one I do not like. And Giles Corrin finds out why we should eat Christmas dinner every day. They're less likely to uh, become addicted to alcohol, cigarettes, drugs. Yeah, so sitting there in front of the TV, eating their TV dinners, basically, they're turning themselves into the crackheads of tomorrow. Table for my wife, yes, and children. Let's go. One table. I do not want to fuck up. Come on, let's go. Go, go. Up. Wakey, wakey. Clear down, Russell. Yeah. How are you, Meg? Hi. Good. Holly, what do you think? Good. Good, yes. Megan? Nice. Mmm. Jack, what do you think? Good. And you like the brown Delicious. meat as well? Yeah. Matilda, what do you think of Anthony? Nice? Does he taste the way you thought he was going to taste? Oh, uh, no. I just oh. need to have baby chicks. So, so you want to have turkeys back in the garden again? Psst, what about pigs in the garden? Yeah. Pig, let them pigs Little pigs? Let you. Little... Uh, what do you think about Matilda's pigs. idea with chickens? Pigs is probably more encouraging. You're happy with the pigs? Yes! yes! Mummy said yes to the pigs. That's fantastic news. I've got to get back yes to the kitchen. For my Give me a kiss. Yes, we'll take some for your teacher. Give me a kiss. Mm. Where are you going? See you later. I'm going back to work. <laughs> back in the kitchen. Right, listen, clean plates, yes. Kids? Or no dessert. What's yes? For dessert? Hopefully, chocolate tart. See you later. Chocolate ice cream. Now, this man, Hugh Foley Whittingstall, is going to attempt to beat me with his chocolate chestnut cake. No chance. You reckon? Um, what are you doing exactly? I'm going to do a, a, a nice gooey chocolate and chestnut cake. Nice. So it'll be quite soft and moussey in the middle. Okay. It's one of the things you could you could literally eat it straight out of the oven as a as a kind of hot chocolate pudding. Yeah, good. And it'll, you won't even manage to slice it. You just have to scoop it out. Oh, nice. Good luck. Good luck. 
So I'm doing a very simple, straightforward chocolate tart. No frills, no spills, no creme fraiche, no vanilla, chocolate tart with roasted hazelnuts. Um, we're going to make uh, the most amazing pastry, um, roll it out, line it in this um, flan ring, put the cream and the milk onto boil, add that to my little chocolate buttons. There's a very well-known Elizabeth David chocolate cake that uses ground almonds instead of flour and keeps it lovely and moist and quite fudgy in the middle. This is really based on that, except I'm just using chestnuts cooked in a little cream and milk, mashed instead of the ground almonds. But really, it's a tribute to, to her recipe. But it's lovely at Christmas, because it's got the chestnuts in. Milk, cream, up to the bowl, hazelnut praline on top of the chocolate buttons, and then, quite simply, cream and milk onto the chocolate and stir away. Now, the thickening agent of this particular tart are whole eggs. And what the egg does is, as the cream and the chocolate and the milk cook, of course, the eggs help to set it. Lightly whisk up the eggs and fold that in to the chocolate. Now, I'm just going to lightly toast my nuts. Now, Hugh, you're highly competitive, aren't you? Even though you're living in the countryside, you still have that chef's competitive streak in you, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like to win, Gordon. Whoa. No, it's all right. You thought it had all gone horribly wrong for me there, didn't you? I was hoping it had, you know that, yeah. Hugh. You, I'd get fired from your kitchen so fast. <laughs> when I look at my part, look at that. Look at <laughs> Oh, my God. Does that Mati bring you out in a sweat? I'd be getting clipped round the head if this was... What? I probably am about to be clipped what? by the head. Weren't you fired from the River Cafe for being a messy puppy? Yes. yes. In a word, yes. Fucking heck. There we go. We're baking the tart blind. That means we're going to line this ring with a pastry and then bake that off first. So that's an added insurance policy that, A, the pastry stays nice and crisp, and, B, all we have to do then is just cook the chocolate filling. So baking blind simply means cooking it twice. You miss not being a professional chef running a restaurant full-time. Um, I don't miss it at all, cos I, no? I was quite a bad professional chef. Really? I just, you know... I a bit like Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got the discipline. But what, what I do now, I, I enjoy very much. You know, it's, yep. what we do in Dorset isn't really a restaurant. It's more informal than that. It's about telling people where the food comes from. I have a great kitchen team, but it's sort of more of a cookery school than a restaurant. Uh huh. And um, did you have long straggly hair at the River Cafe? I've always had long straggly hair. How many times a year do you wash it? I think I'm due for about once a month. Seasonal. Seasonal. Did you have to wear a hair nap? I could be due for my pre-Christmas wash any day now. You're distracting me and you're making me over-whip the egg whites. <laughs> the thing about folding in egg whites is never fold more than you need to, but you do have to get it properly incorporated, which means going deep to the bottom of the bowl and just lifting the mix, and that's it. And in it goes. And that just goes in there for 25 minutes. The really important not to overcook it so that you don't want it to dry out. So, out. Nuts, sprinkle the nuts at the bottom, chocolate in. Does look very good. We don't fill the tart right to the very top here. Two thirds of the way in, open the oven door, and then get the rest of your mixture and top up the tart. Uh, so that's so you don't have to carry a really full tart over exactly. to the oven. Exactly. So it gets really nice and full. Uh, that's obviously a very useful tip for chefs who've been drinking too much on Christmas Day. Absolutely. Oh, shit. <laughs> I dropped the cloth in it. I've already messed up my pudding. Are you OK? Yeah, I just went in to have a little look and I dropped the cloth. You see, that's why I got fired. Things like that. I dropped the cloth in the middle of my cake. I hope that's a clean one. Now it's all down to fucking Sharon Osbourne, you know that. And, you know, I've got, for the first time in the F-Word series, a proper chef in my kitchen. So well, if there's any time now that I really want to win, it's fucking today, Hugh. That's, that's very kind of you to describe me as a chef. I'm not a good loser, you know that. <laughs> huh? Well, you better be. I got, I'm now in that state of mind where I actually really want to win. Serious? Yeah. Mine's in the oven now. It's got to go in there at 90 degrees for an hour and 10 to an hour and 15 minutes. So it cooks nice and slowly. We can't afford to turn it up any higher than 90, 95 degrees, otherwise it splits and separates. And I'm right. damned if I'm going to lose this challenge. For me, the best thing about Christmas, of course, the food. The worst thing about Christmas, the leftovers. Now, I've come to see a bunch of guys that just can't escape from that unwanted turkey. Doncaster Prison may not be renowned for its good food, but like many prisons, it runs a professionally recognised catering course to help rehabilitate inmates. 
This is our kitchen, Gordon. Again, with bars on there? Yes. Huh? Flippin' egg. This is a real hell's kitchen. Fucking hell. There are three and a half thousand meals a day going out of this kitchen. Three and a half thousand meals a day? Yes. I'm not too concerned about my dog tag. I'm just concerned the fact that I can get the fuck out of here in an hour's time, that's all. OK, turkey leftover curry. Hello, guys. I'll be cooking with Kirin, Baby, Daz, and Jacko. I'm told they're the keenest cooks on X-Wing. Serious? Rumour has it. Uh, and you're supposed to be the sort of curry expert. Yeah. I won't say an expert. No, yeah. but you love a curry. I like a curry, yeah. Yeah. Curry is the most popular dish in the prison, and it's also a great way to deal with leftover Christmas turkey. So I'm going to show the men of X-Wing how to make a Thai red curry. Uh, red chilies, OK, obviously. Uh, garlic, lemongrass and ginger. Um, have you used lemongrass before? No. No? Cut it in half. OK. Yeah, have a little smell. Lovely. Yeah, that's really nice and fragrant. Have you, have you smelled that before? Yes. Yeah, have a smell of that. Lovely. Fresh lemongrass. Beautiful. Well, that'll do, just because it smells nice and sweet. Almost like vanilla. Really nice and lemony and fresh and fragrant. That lightens up the curry. So this is where we make the paste. And the way to mix it now is just get all the ingredients into a blender. We're doing it today with turkey. But, you know, this paste is great if you're making a, you know, a fish curry. Right, there's your onion. Yes, there's my onion. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's have a competition. You know how competitive chefs are, yes? Huh? Right, what do you reckon? We'll take him with the first uh, half, or do you reckon they will be finished before me? He's pretty good. He's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Right, knife down. The whole thing chopped and ready to go. Right. Nice. Dad? Set, go. Come on, Kieran. First half. Hold on a minute. <laughs> hey. Hey, fancy a job? <laughs> hey, I'm serious. Fancy a job? Yeah. Not 25 quid a week, big boy. 25 quid a day. Yeah. When you out? 2007. OK, 2007. Give me a call and come spend a day with me at the kitchen, OK? Yeah. To make the curry, we fry off the onions, add our curry paste, and then pour in coconut milk for a rich, creamy flavour. Nice. Then, as it cooks down, we add some monge too for colour and a bit of bite. What look called, Gordon, then? They're called monge too, or snow peas. Snow. Snow peas, yeah. It gives a really nice sort of um, texture, slightly sweet as well. Now the turkey meat, and mix it through. Nice. Keep on mixing that in, my man. Back up to the ball. Um, now, with the rice, we're going to make a, almost like a, a sticky rice. And we've got some cream coconut here. And the idea, of course, is to get the rice, cut up the coconut, and then just crumble that through there like this. Yeah. Then from there, sprinkle the coriander through there. And what it does, it makes a really nice, fragrant rice. OK, um, 30 minutes of the rice. Yeah. Whilst that's cooking, um, I'd love to go and look where you, uh, where you sleep in the cell. Excellent. Come on, fucking that's small, huh? Yeah. Huh? Who snores the loudest? <laughs> Dan. Me. You? Yeah. Who farts the loudest? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Do you mind if I lie down? That's mine. Yeah. That's yours? Yeah, that's mine, yeah. God, fucking hell. God, it's fucking hard, no? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's all right. Don't you think? Yeah, it's quite firm, that, no? Yeah, that's all right, that. Let me just think. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Can you just dim those lights down a little bit, please, Jack? Um, how's the rice? Lovely. Hmm. Go out of it. Good. Should we get over there? Yeah. How are you, big boy? It smells lovely, that Yes. Yeah. Finished with fresh coriander. Thank you. Yeah? Good man. Yeah. Huh? So, what do you reckon then, so far? Yeah, real nice. Yes? Yeah, really nice. What's yeah. that putting in rice? Right. Enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. gorgeous. Huh? Yeah? Beautiful. Merry Christmas, big man. Merry Christmas, Joe. Uh, Merry Christmas, Joe. Thanks uh, for that. Not at all. Let me see. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Huh? Don't be late. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be late. Look at that. 
suddenly all your confidence is just sapping away. <laughs> You're absolutely fucking right. <laughs> that's ready. That's ready for Sharon. Now look, it's not quite firm, but it. Well, that's it, good, isn't it? You want it a bit gooey. A little bit gooey. That's right. Wee! Oh, that looks beautiful. It does look very, very nice. Homemade vanilla ice cream. Looks lovely. Mr. Whittingstall, it does look rather yummy, that. You know that. I'm slightly concerned that it looks too fucking good. However... <laughs> it's yes. going to be close, isn't it? It's going to be very close. They look great. They both look good, don't they? Can I just... They do look fantastic. Can I just have a little sliver of yours? Yeah, of course. Do you mind? Just a little... It's all right. Yeah. Mm. Please. All right, and have a little bit of this one. And the cream. Mm. It's very good. It's incredibly rich. OK, Jean-Baptiste, take them over to Sharon. Hope she likes them. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. Hey, listen, remember, if she doesn't, you're fucked. Yes? You're out of a I job. Know. I know that. Yeah? I'm fed up with fucking losing. Hello, Sharon. What How have I you? got? I'm fine. Here we go. So we have two desserts. Yes. So I'll let you try the first one. Mmm, I love dessert. It's my favourite part of the meal. Mm, I love too. Me too. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. Have you made your mind on this one? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So this is dessert number two. Mm. Mm. Compared to the first one. Well, let's leave it like this. One of them. I really love, and the other one I do not like. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm very excited. You've been working really hard. I've been having a lovely dinner. I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm in excited. a state of deep relaxation about this. Hi. Huh? How are you? Sorry, Sharon, Hugh. Very well. This is very tense. You know that. Why? Well, because... Well, I must say that I have heard that your desserts have not been going down great. No. Rumour has it on the street. Yes. The pressure's on. I am the chocolate queen. Are you? Good, good. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. 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 good. All right, yeah. 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 Don't get too close. You've already done yeah. a lot of sucking up, OK? Yeah. It's my turn. All right. Put us out of oh. fucking misery. Well, Put you I out of fucking too. misery. The winner is, which one would you go back to a restaurant for? OK, this is the one that's absolutely and completely fucking wonderful. <laughs> Jesus Christ! And what about this one with the hazelnuts? I would never eat that. <laughs> that is fucking brilliant. Sharon Osborne, <laughs> I did love you. I do love you too. Oh my God! Mm, this is wonderful. Can I finish it? Please now, do. Too? Can I spoon you? feed you? Oh yes, darling. That was just fabulous. Mmm, huge. Yeah. Sharon. Yes, darling. May I? Yes, please. What else do uh -huh. you cook, you? What do you like? Gordon, may Would I? Would you like no, to taste? No, quickly. you must. Come on. Next on the menu, it's decision time. I give one of the commies the break of a lifetime, a job in my kitchens. The person that I'm going to offer a job to is... And Giles Corrin here's an amazing excuse for eating in front of the telly. <laughs> There's always the excuse, the dog always eats something. That's no good. You eat in front of the telly because the dog at the table. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, time to find out what our diners thought about the desserts. Did they agree with Sharon's stupid verdict? Let's go, Russell. Light, moist, chocolatey, gooey yumminess. It's great. The cream that he made with his with the sultan was, was fantastic. Very tasty, but a little bit too sweet and a bit too rich. Christmas is hard work, but not for our professional eater, Giles Corrin. He wishes Every day was Christmas Day. Oh, well, I wish it could be Christmas every day. At this shopping centre, it's been Christmas every day since the end of October. But what if it really were? What if we had Christmas lunch every day of the year? Well, presumably, we'd all be fat, broke and miserable because Christmas dinner is famously fattening, expensive and stressful. But maybe we've got it all wrong. There's some convincing evidence around that if we ate Christmas lunch every day, we would, in fact, be happier, healthier and better off. The first excellent reason to have Christmas lunch every day is that it's a meal you prepare from scratch and not a ready meal. That means it's likely to be a lot better for you. Well, if you look at these labels, 
you see a list of additives and preservatives, and many of them are high in salt and fat. Mm -hmm. So you've got less control over what you're eating. Uh, so, so Christmas dinner is better for us than what people eat every day. Well, if you think about it, turkey breast without the skin is a great low-fat source of protein. You've got carrots, parsnips, Brussels sprouts, a great selection of vegetables, helping you to achieve your recommended five a day. Mm -hmm. But don't smother them in butter, nor salt. That's the key. Steamed vegetables lightly cooked. Then you've got your potatoes. Well, if you keep them large, keep the skin on. Explain. If you keep them large, they absorb less fat. So actually, you've got a lower fat potato just by keeping the potatoes large. So a big, floury, not too crunchy potato with its skin on. Is that the thing. sounds delicious. It certainly <laughs> does. Another potentially worrying thing about eating Christmas lunch every day is that it costs so much money. It is a big family occasion, and it is a big meal. So and you, do you think it's more expensive than a normal meal? I, I, I yes. would say yes. I think you always go a little bit extra at Christmas with the food, preparation, everything yeah. else, yeah. But that's where you're wrong, because the second reason to have Christmas lunch every day is that it's actually a bargain. According to the Good Housekeeping Institute, your Christmas food shop actually costs 40% less than your normal food shop. You go to the um, supermarket and you buy all these ingredients and then when you take them home you can cook um, one big meal but then you have leftovers yeah. for everything else. This is the famous turkey curry that I've heard so much about. Exactly. And turkey sandwiches we... and turkey souffle well, and turkey we... creme brulee. That's right. Turkey soup. Turkey pasta, turkey rice, risotto, stir fries, sandwiches. Well, I think that's about enough turkey. The third reason we should have Christmas lunch every day is that it's a meal we eat at the table with our family, unlike the rest of the year. Where do you eat? Do you eat in front of the telly or...? Yeah, at the moment. Mostly. Someone, the dog at the table leaking. <laughs> <laughs> There's always the excuse, the dog always so eats got, something. That's no good. You eat in front of the telly because the dog at the table. They're not alone. A recent survey found that three-quarters of people eat dinner in front of the TV and one in five families only eat together once a week. So why does it matter then? Why, why, sh why should we all sit around together eating a, a freshly prepared meal instead of sitting in front of the TV? I don't see why. Well, if you're sitting down and you're eating and you're, and you're watching television, then you're not speaking to each other. And communication is actually the, the way that we form strong bonds in a family. Is there any proof? I mean, it sounds a nice idea. Is there Absolutely. any proof that it's true? I mean, there, there have been loads of surveys into this particular subject, but there was a really big survey into thousands of teenagers and their parents by the University of Columbia. And that stretched out over 10 years, and it found that it sort of improves children's um, skills communication-wise, their academic skills, they're less likely to uh, become addicted to alcohol, cigarettes, drugs. They're less likely to become addicted to drugs if they sit down to a square meal every night? Yeah, absolutely. So sitting there in front of the TV, eating their TV dinners, basically, they're turning themselves into the crackheads of tomorrow? Well, <laughs> I suppose you could say that. So there you have it. Eating Christmas lunch every day could make you happier, healthier and better off. And best of all, it might make your children less likely to end up on crack. Right, I've got a present for you, yes? Um, I've thought long and hard, um, spent a fortune on it, and something that I've been dying to sort of give you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas. Is it heavy? Yes. <laughs> you wanker. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to get you more notice now, make you look a bit taller. Try them on. Hey. I've already got a pair. Uh, no, no. <laughs> because... <laughs> oh, no. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> give the audience a twirl. Give, them, give a little tell over there. Give us a <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> yes. Tonight, the F word commies have been fighting out for a job in my kitchen. How are you? Totally shit in it. Didn't think I did myself justice. Well, we all make mistakes, trust me. Uh, how are you? I, I really enjoyed being in the, in the kitchen. It was, um, yeah, it was the hardest it's been. It all began three months ago when I scoured the country to find new chefs with promise. Over a thousand applied, we shortlisted 12. Now, what in the fuck do we have here? Each week, two commies have gone head to head in the F word kitchen. Now two remain, but only one of them will get a job with me. Russell, he's creative, quietly confident, and he has flair. Good. Well done, big boy, yes. But sometimes his judgment is off. Okay. Taste it? Yeah. You tasted it? Yes, chef. Yeah, and? I think it's okay, chef. Pasta's overcooked. Stop. If I don't win, I would be absolutely gutted. Miller, she's a fast learner, confident, and she has an eye for detail. One minute, chef. Yeah. They're nicely sourced. But the big question is, can she cope with pressure? Having got this far, 
I really want to win this. Miller, look at the pass. That's going in the bin. Where's your passion? There, there's a lot of passion. I hope you realise by now um, that I'm obsessed with all things food. People look at me and tell me I'm crazy. Why do you want to do this? I, because of the food, because I want to work with food, because I want to cook. So you're not really just posh totter. You really want to cook for a living. I really want to cook for a living. You really want I to cook really for a living. I really want to cook for a living. Yeah. Describe your day. Today I felt that I've done crap, to be honest. I just didn't perform. I felt... But well, you've got to be nothing. able to take the pressure. And when the shit hits the fan, it hits the fan. Yeah. And my reputation's at stake as yeah. well. If you can't handle this this evening, and you made so many fuck-ups, what's it going to be like when you're in a real serious kitchen? Well, that's why I'm wanting to have that opportunity to try and get myself up to scratch. I feel that you're a person that can actually iron me out. Anyway, uh, my conclusion to you both is you've come a long way. I have to base my decision on individuals that can absorb more, be pushed more, and ones that can become stronger under more pressure. And the person that I'm going to offer a job to is Camilla. Well done. Thank you. And well done to you. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. And well done to you. Yeah. Yes? Don't give up. Yeah. Keep cooking. Stay yeah. focused. Yes? Yeah. And push yourself. Yeah. Well done. Cheers. Thank you. Well done. Cheers. Well done. Oh, well, well done, you bad girl. Thanks for watching the F Word. Hope you enjoyed your meal. Please, please keep cooking. You've got to eat, so you might as well eat well. Happy plucking Christmas.